Good day, everybody. How are you? Let's talk about discipline this week. What if it's always been hard for you to be disciplined? Is that you? Or maybe you've been disciplined before, but you keep falling off the horse and you don't understand why. Is that you? Or maybe you have like a, a love-hate relationship with discipline. Some of us may love it because we see the results that it's produced in our lives. Some of us may hate it. I don't, that word's kind of heavy, but you know, it works for right now. Some of us may hate it because it's like you got to do what you don't want to do. It, it, maybe it's, it's so challenging or it's painful if you got a body goal or, you know, maybe it's just it, if you feel like you want to relax and your what you need to be disciplined about wants to push you, you're like, ugh, right? Or maybe you don't even have a relationship with it at all. Maybe you're just kind of coasting and you don't feel like you need it or you don't want to feel like you need it, right? Like there are so many myriads of ways that we could approach whether we think we need discipline or not in our lives. But if you feel like it is something that is missing from your life, you might want to stick around for this conversation. If you don't think it's important to have discipline, if you're like, eh, whatever, you might want to stick around for this conversation. Um, because I, I want to pose the idea that discipline is paramount. Discipline has become like a BFF for me. Discipline is what helps me to feel encouraged and empowered at a time like this where we're dealing with some shakeup in the world. It's the one place that I do have the ability to control what's happening in my environment, to control what's happening up here, to control what I'm giving my focus and attention to, right? And if I can rely on me, then I can probably trust the results that I get. I know I've given my best. I know I've done what I can do. Now, whatever shows up, I, hey, that's probably, that's intended for my life. So let's talk about it today. Welcome to the conversation, everybody. Hey, Mike, how are you? Thank you so much. I had a beautiful birthday, actually. Um, I'm going back through these comments to see what's up. Uh, hey, Serge, thank you for the birthday wish. 44 on deck and feeling amazing. Yeah, we're going to talk about discipline, Caldoon. Welcome to the conversation. It is, to me, a cornerstone of success, discipline. Discipline is that, that thing that you lean on when you, you do feel a lack of control in your life, especially then, not just when you do. Hopefully you hold on to it when you get things back under control, but especially when you feel a lack of control. Discipline is that thing that can give you a sense of certainty because you're, doing, you're, you're, you're engaging in something consistently, right? You are um, giving something that you choose for yourself, hyper-focus. You are looking at a juicy enough goal that you're willing to make whatever sacrifice to get to it because it's worth it. Discipline gives you something to look forward to. Discipline creates the space to have the thing that you desire. When you, there's a great uh, definition for it, doing what you ought to do so that you can do what you want to do. Doing what you ought to do even when you don't want to do it so that you can do what you want to do. Discipline is that thing that, yes, it hurts right now in this moment, but if I do this and if I stay consistent and I get, and, and, and I get to this body goal, it's all worth it. If I do this and I stay consistent and I get to this business goal, it's worth it. So you want, you want to make sure that your goal is juicy enough to do whatever you need to do to get to it. If your why ain't good enough, more than likely you might fall off because it's like, for what? So there's a few things I want to point out today. There's, I wrote, you know how your girl do, okay? So that things don't slip my mind. Um, to share with you, you know, some ways that you can develop and hopefully sustain self-discipline. Okay, so before I even get into that, who in here is struggling with discipline? First thing, is anybody in here struggling with it? Hey, Renee, happy belated. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I didn't forget about you just uh, post because work's insane. I feel awful. Oh, it's okay, honey. I want you to know I absolutely admire and adore you. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. Thank you. So I hope you uh, 
have a blessed new year of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. I'm grateful <laughs> to be alive, to have my peace of mind, to uh, be in good health. I mean, these are things that I, I count my blessings, man. Thank you. So who is um, struggling with discipline or who just wants some tips on how to, you know, maintain and sustain it? Kim Ling says discipline in our house is imperative, not a physical consequence uh, form of discipline, but a form of structure. Come on now. Structure helps my children strive, especially our son with autism. Bless up. Discipline is self-love. If you guys missed my, um, thank you for that, Kim. If you missed my post about discipline yesterday, it basically speaks to that. Like discipline, it gives you a sense of self-respect because you're caring for yourself on this level. It, it's a form of self-care because you have prioritized you and you're doing what you need to do for you. That is like respecting yourself. That is a form of self-care, self-love. Discipline is power. Because the more that you engage in being disciplined, the stronger you get in it. The more you engage in discipline, the better you feel about who you are and how you're showing up in the world. At least for me. Discipline is freedom. Exactly what Kim is saying, because think about it. If you discipline your kids, you don't, you're going to trust them more not to have to micromanage them. Think about if you're disciplined at work, how your boss is not going to micromanage you because they know they can trust you. It's freedom. Think about how in a relationship, if you hold a certain aspect of the relationship down, your partner is going to trust you more. It's freedom. There are so many things that discipline is that to me, it is so worth cultivating in your life. When you can rely on you, which is what I was speaking about earlier uh, at the top of this chat, you can trust your results more. You can trust who you are more. You can trust how you're going to show up in the world with discipline. There's things that I need to do as a vocalist, you know, as far as like doing vocal exercises or working out at the gym because my body is an instrument. When I do what I'm supposed to do with my instrument, I can trust myself out on the stage more. But if I don't work out, if I don't do cardio, I don't know if I'm going to have enough wind. If I don't do the vocal exercises, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stretch to the notes I want to get to or have the clarity of tone in my voice that I want to have. All that stuff takes discipline to get there. If I want a certain quality of me to show up, discipline is required. Ooh. Yes, bro. Yes. If I want a certain quality of me to show up for you guys, discipline is required. I meditate in the morning, not only for me, but how I show up in the world. I visualize consistently discipline so that I can get to that thing. So that, I, so that by keeping it at the forefront of my mind, I'm going to take the actions necessary to get to it. But if I don't visualize enough, I'm probably going to forget about the goal. And not get to it. That's why we write the goals down. It's another way to stay disciplined. Do you even write things down so that they're in plain sight? You can see where you're going. You know how many distractions we have out in the world, right? That are vying for your attention. Billboards, TV, ads, social media, live broadcast, whatever it is, dings and blings, text messages, whatever those things are, are vying for your attention, splitting your attention, splitting your focus. And every time you want to sit down, stop and start. It requires discipline to turn your phone off. It requires discipline, but it'll help you be disciplined to turn your phone off. Right. Like I literally keep my phone on do not disturb now. It's one of the best things I've ever done. Because otherwise I would be getting phone calls that would break my train of thought. Phone calls break my train of creativity. Phone call break. I, I can't get nothing done like that. If you keep fragmenting my focus. I will give that time when I have time to give that time. Do you cut your phone off so that you can get discipline? Let me see what y'all are saying. 
Renee says, I have a hard a time with discipline because my anxiety and depression sometimes takes over and I give up on myself. Okay, thank you for your transparency, honey. Mm. Okay, I might have to do a, a, a series on anxiety. I lost my discipline for the last two weeks uh, because I still cannot work and do not know where it's going to end. I need to take it back. That's right. Ooh, glad you said that, Shirley. Thank you for your authenticity. Thank you for your transparency. That This is, is exactly what I'm talking about. One of the aspects that discipline is something to lean on. I don't know when things are going to open back up for my profession as far as entertainment is concerned. I don't know. But what am I doing? I'm not dropping my disciplines because guess what? I'm still visualizing where I'm going. I'm still seeing the next frontier. I'm still writing my goals down. I'm still getting clear about what I'm going to accomplish this year. I'm still writing down action steps to get to those plans. I'm still stretching in what's possible. And because I'm doing that, more ideas are coming in daily because I'm making the room for it through discipline. I'm creating the space for more to come in. I'm creating the space for me to think. I'm creating the space for me to be creative. I'm creating the space to connect with more. So, yeah, that's on hold. Cool. I'll be back. <laughs> let me let me get to this in front of me. Then let me just get to some disciplines. I'm, I'm now I'm back on um, working out every day. Even if it's just a little bit, do things incrementally. Moderation or incrementally. Like sometimes we might th think we got to throw in the whole kit and caboodle and then you burn out. Can you take it incrementally? Like I was, I had to pause. Remember, I don't know, you know, I was, I was doing some major healing emotionally, spiritually, mentally, having to give myself a break. So I like, I paused on a level that I'm not used to. It's totally foreign. And I was like, all right. I give myself permission to pause. I got, I had to do that like mentally. I had to give myself permission to pause. Some of us need to do that, if, especially if you're a workaholic or you go, 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 or you're just used to being busy. You know what I'm saying? Pause. There's power in pausing. There's power in stillness because maybe if you're go, 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 you need to be still so that you can get the next jolt of inspiration, the next spark of creativity, the next motivation for change, the next expansive way to see life. If you're always going, you might not be able to capture it and you just operate on old inspiration, old ways of doing things. Maybe the pause is necessary, you know, trusting the flow. But then get back on the horse. And do you have to get back on the horse and be perfect? No, not unless you, you put that pressure on yourself. Be gentle with yourself, right? This is my suggestion. And then take, take that next step. It could be incremental. It doesn't have to be where you were. You'll get, you'll get there. You'll get back there if that's what you want to do or go beyond. And then take the next step and keep building on top. That's another way to build self-discipline incrementally. All right? Let me see what you guys are saying. Hey, Brad. Welcome to the conversation. Bless up, uh, Trey. Let's see. So let's continue on ways that we can build up being disciplined. Yeah, yes. All right. So I'm currently doing something that is creating discipline. I didn't necessarily do it for discipline. I'm doing it for something. I have different reasons that I'm engaging in this, but it is a way that create. it is a thing that creates discipline. Now, I do do this every month for three days a month. And most of you know it. It's a three day liquid fast that does create discipline for me. That is for discipline for me. Because guess what? Fasting is delayed gratification. That means that you learn to temper the body. You temper the mind. You temper the spirit. You're in control of the vehicle. You're not letting the flesh run you. And it can happen, right? But if you can just grab the, your power back at some different points, then you're kind of playing that juicy, delicious tug of war with the body. Getting balanced. Because, you know, you're just, it's not about being perfect. I don't know what perfect is. Uh -uh. OK, just finding your balance. We need the light and the dark integration of yourself. Integration, right? Hey, Giselle, you're welcome. So. Delay gratification, excellent way to create discipline, takes control of the vehicle again, takes control of the mind again. 
I'll be, sometimes I might be on a rampage doing stuff that's not necessarily in my best interest. It's like, ah, you don't need to be, that three-day liquid fast shuts it all down. Boop. And guess what? That powers me up to know that I'm still in control. Do you need to do that for yourself? Fasting can be an incredible, and this is not just to say that you have to fast to benefit from something called delayed gratification. You could do delayed gratification could be, I'm not going to, maybe you're used to just picking up sweets whenever you want to, right? And so you say, you know what? I'm going to allow myself to have sweets, but I'm not going to have it until eight o'clock tonight. Or I'm not going to have it until 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then I'm, that's it. Delayed gratification. And, and, and for me, when you accomplish these things and, you, and, you, and you're consistently accomplishing these things, it can make you feel successful, even with your small goals. And that may not be such a small goal depending on the person. Maybe a huge thing to accomplish if you know that sweets take over your life. Delayed gratification, powerful, powerful tool for building discipline. Um, of course, we talked about it, but I'm going to say it more succinctly. Having goals. I've talked to plenty of people on coaching calls and they're like, I'm like, so what do you want? What do you desire? And they don't know. They're just on remote control. They just get up and do the same thing every day. And it's like, I got a job and I have a family and that's that. That's it. And that's okay if that brings you joy. But if you're not feeling fulfilled, it's probably because you're not in alignment with what you truly desire. And what you truly desire may take some time for you to sit down and spell it out. And then when you spell it out for yourself, you write it down for yourself, you put it at the forefront of your mind for yourself. You're like, oh, that's, that's what I want. Okay, now put some pl- some 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 um, action steps underneath that plan, that goal, and you're like, that's how I get to it. That's how I start the process. Some of us need to do that. That's discipline for you. Self love, man. Self care. You get to go after what you want. You get to have what you desire. You get to start the ball rolling for your future. You're not just on remote control. You know. Let me see what you guys are saying. LaShonda, hey, practicing uh, more gratefulness to solve a lot of areas of challenge for me. Uh, Read because I have books. Work out because I've got legs. Hello. Be inspired because I've got row. Grateful I have so much to do. Um, uh Uh-oh. Grateful I have so much to do. Uh, Hope that makes sense for the topic. Yes, thank you, LaShonda. Shirley is in. Brad says, depression and anxiety for me is sitting around, not working or doing anything. I'm used to energy and moving fast. But in a way, this pause is teaching me about discipline. Excellent. Yes. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what your balance is. For some of us, moving is, is, is the balance. Some of us have been too lazy. We've been sitting around. We've been, you know, half boot button it. Okay. You've been half assing it. And now life is coming up and slapping you around. And then some of us, we've been moving, 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 and right, life is slapping you around a little bit, saying, sit down, think, pause. I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to tell you something fresh to think about. I'm trying to show you something else. I'm trying to show you another direction. Will you let me have your attention? Right? Um, let's see what else I wrote down. Ooh, 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 ooh. How long I've been talking? I don't know. Okay. Make sure you put yourself in a good environment to succeed too, so that you can be disciplined. I mean, and that can, that can, oh my gosh, that can be a range of things. I mean, for example, if you know you're challenged with eating at a fast food restaurant, but you know they got salads there, it might not be the best thing to go get your salad from that spot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give yourself a fighting chance to be disciplined. Uh, create brilliant environments for you to 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 think in, to grow in, to, you know, if you even if you got to find a corner in your house, I don't know how big your space is. You may have to just create a space that makes you feel like this is for me. This is for me to come and sit down and think. This is for me to come and sit down and write. This is for me to to do this creative project. 
right? Create your genius environment. Create your brilliant environment so that you self-nurture, right? This is for me. And then sit in that space and create the space for yourself. Set alarms. Set alarms. That's another great way to foster self-discipline. You know, and honor the alarm. And sometimes if we have our alarm sitting next to us, you may just hit the alarm and keep doing what you're doing. But if you put your alarm across the room, you're going to have to get up and go over there and cut that alarm off. And maybe that'll break your pattern in the moment and you'll get to doing what you need to do for you. Doing what you ought to do even when you don't want to do it so that you can do what you want to do. Discipline. Because on the other end of that is what? The new body goal, the new project, the new position at work, the new book. What's on the other end of your discipline? Is the reward juicy enough? Does it motivate you? Does it inspire you? Does it say this is worth it? If not, beef it up. How can you strengthen your why? How can you strengthen the reason that you're going to put yourself through whatever uh, level of sacrifice you may need to do or the level of consistency you may need to be in or the level of focus you need to be in in order to get to the goal? Is it juicy enough? Is the reward on the other side juicy enough? That brings me to another point. Reward yourself. What can you do for you that acknowledges that you're doing what you need to do? that acknowledges that you're being disciplined? What is that thing that can make you feel like I'm acknowledging myself because positive reinforcement is powerful? Hey lady, positive reinforcement is powerful, powerful, powerful in creating discipline, self-discipline. All right, let's see if I missed anything. Yeah, and maybe uh, this kind of this kind of feeds into, you know, creating a genius environment for yourself. But also, what's your power time of the day? What is your, you know, like some people do well at night. So will you create the space for yourself to create at night? Or some people do well in the mornings. Will you get up in the morning and create a time block for you to work in the morning? Find your sweet spot. And they cut things off, shut the world out. Even if it's for a half hour, you got a half hour. Can you imagine if you dedicated a half hour a day to whatever your dream or goal is, what you could accomplish just from chipping away like that? You're going to get it done. Even if it's over time, you're going to get it done. How good would you feel about yourself if you gave yourself that gift of discipline? It's a gift. And then when you see the results and you feel the results and you experience the results on the other side, wouldn't you want to continue to, to engage in that? And then when you like when I lose discipline, if I lose discipline, it's one of the first things I'm running back to when I get a chance because I feel off kilter. I've lost some balance. I've lost some power. I've lost some confidence. So here's to turning discipline into your BFF. Your best friend forever. Because it could be the thing that helps you to take everything to the next level. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Discipline is queen, baby. Hey, Alex. Bro, it's been a hard day. The lockdown has been extended until August here in LA. Huh? Lord, Lord, Lord. You know, Alex, I was wondering about when they were going to give us more information about the lockdown. That's wowzers. So we got some hanging out to do, y'all. What are the next most powerful steps that we get to take for your empowerment? Because that's where it's at. This is an opportunity. We're going to look at this. I'm looking at this as an opportunity. I choose to look at this as an opportunity. How about you? How do you choose to look at this? I just got some very, very interesting news right now.
Amazing. I choose to see this as an opportunity. And so I'm going to allow it to be an opportunity. How about you? How about you? Does anybody want to say anything before I get out of here? What do you mean? What's why you lost your confidence, Shirley? What are you referring to? Hey, Marquita. Lately, I've been working on my goal at night. It's better for me because my mind is settled and house quiet. Good. And that's what I'm talking about. Finding your sweet spot. When is your time of day? to create, to just be, to read, to, to, to slip into whatever your power zone is. Find it, engage it, cut your phone off, set alarms. If you guys just joined the conversation, definitely check it out. Great tips in here for you to develop and foster self-discipline. It's time. Again, again. Bless up, Alex, good, honey. Okay, y'all, I'm sending love out. Here we go.